Hello everyone, it's March. We're on top of a maybe 10 foot snowbank. Um, it's lovely out today. Uh, you know, we're, uh, I think we're kind of turning the corner here. In a lot of ways, um, March for me starts to feel good. The sun kind of uh, warms you up. If you're in the shade though, it's still pretty chilly. Um, but we're turning the corner, I just know it. Uh, and this is your seller series description. So um, we're completely kind of in balance here. We've got three whites and three reds kind of coming from all over the world. Some great new world options, some classic old world options that I'm really excited about. Um, just some really lovely stuff. So let's kind of jump into it. Uh, this is March. So we're going to go to uh, Santa Barbara um, and we're going to be looking at the Beckman family right here. I had the chance to visit um, you know, the Santa Barbara vineyards, kind of this area called the Ballard Canyon. It's a really amazing couple producers there that we work with regularly. Um, Stoltman, the Stoltman family's there, the Beckman family is there, and they just do really, really lovely stuff. Um, they're kind of known as like a Rhone Ranger, a lot of Grenache, a lot of Syrah, it's really, really good. Um, but they make this single vineyard, Sauvignon Blanc, that's all biodynamic from this vineyard called the, uh, the Parisma Vineyard. Um, and it just has this kind of, extra gear of flavor for me, which like, you know, Sauvignon Blanc can be pretty straightforward, a little, a little simple at times, uh, very like aperitif, um, you know, maybe not offering up as much kind of bandwidth of flavor, but like this one has it. And this one kind of has it in spades. It's really, really lovely. Um, it just has uh, a little bit of spice, some mid palate texture, um, you know, kind of these flavors of like, uh, just a little bit more spice kind of going on, which I really, really loved. So um, the Beckman family kind of started uh, in, you know, the uh, mid 1990s. You know, uh, 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 you know, a husband wife team, and now it's kind of classic. Like the kids are taking over and really kind of pushing hard with uh, with really lovely organic farming. So uh, yeah, the Ballard Canyon, uh, San Ynez Valley, kind of sideways country, uh, but lovely Sauvignon Blanc. So uh, moving to the Southern Rhone River Valley right here, we're looking at Chateau de Manassi. Um, this is a 2022 uh, white wine, which is really exciting for us. Um, you know, we we always get excited about the new vintages, um, but when we have one that's kind of this, a wine of this quality that kind of hits so early, um, we've tasted the wine twice now, and it's just absolutely delicious. Manassee is a, a very, very old estate um, in this village called Lirac. And Lirac um, is on the western bank of the Rhone, uh, Rhone River, kind of across the the valley from like where Chateau Neuf du Pop is. And it has all the classic hallmarks of the Southern Rhone, you know, kind of fractured limestone, uh, you know, blended over clay uh, with these kind of big round galets as part of the, uh, uh, you know, kind of the makeup of the vineyards. But what's special about this particular property is that, um, you know, in the early 20th century, this property was kind of bequeathed to um, a group of monastic brothers um, who maintained a pretty high quality, like organic growing tradition. Um, up until uh, I think about 2003 when they finally brought in like a, a winemaker from the outside and it was a young man named Florian Andre um, who really like really pushed the boundaries of organic and biodynamic farming in this area which is kind of easier to do when you have the mistral kind of blasting up the Rhone River Valley um, to kind of dry things out um, you really have the opportunity to not use pesticides, not use herbicides, kind of just far more naturally. And the resulting wines are, are really for like us to kind of enjoy and us to kind of uh, really kind of celebrate because they're just, there's more, there's more complexity to it, there's more flavor, there's more aromatics and it's pure. So uh, this is Grenache Blanc, Roussan and Marsan. Um, it's uh, vinified in stainless steel and goes into barrel for a short period of time before bottling. It's just really lovely, uh, medium bodied, still kind of a winter white, I would say. Um, but fantastic. Moving to Alsace, this is a uh, Domaine Barm uh, Boucher, and this is a winery that is, uh, is as far as I know, back in the market, but just very recently. We tasted through the full lineup about a month ago and really, really loved it. From from their Cremant, their sparkling wine, all the way to their Grand Cru, um, Grand Cru Riesling. Like the whole the whole line is impressive. Um, another classic husband wife team. Unfortunately, the husband passed away about 10 uh, about 10 years ago and now the, the son and daughter are really kind of pushing um, to make some lovely wines they have about 15 hectare um, and all of their vines are biodynamically farmed as well so this is a single vineyard Pinot Blanc from the Rosenberg vineyard which is just outside of Wittelsheim 
Um, and if you haven't been to Alsace, uh, you should consider going. Um, it's this really lovely frontier between, you know, along the Rhine River, this very broad uh, valley, uh, you know, where you stare off to the east and you see the, uh, the Black Forest, the Schwarzwald. Um, and behind you, you have kind of the ramp up to the Vosges Mountains. Um, and in front of you are these like picturesque little villages that, uh, you know, flower boxes and lots of color. And then you have these white wines in the glass that are just like spice, they're golden. They're deep, resonant wines um, that really kind of uh, kind of stop you in your in your tracks with like how serious they come across. Um, you know, a lot of people think of the great white wines of France, like being maybe from you know Burgundy, of course. Um, you know, the Loire. But in a lot of ways, we don't celebrate the wines from Alsace enough, and it's just um, it's too bad. Um, I'm, I'm on a mission to kind of drink more Alsatian wines, uh, especially this time of year. The spring is perfect uh, for Alsatian wines. Moving to uh, New Zealand, we don't feature a lot of New Zealand wines. Um, and in a lot of ways, there's a lot of like bigger producers, kind of co-ops, uh, kind of big labels that, uh, you know, they sell really well, but they don't maybe always tickle our fancy, uh, or get us kind of excited. But, you know, this is a single vineyard, all hand-picked, um, you know, Pinot Noir that comes from this small little part of the Marlboro growing region called the, the Waihopai Valley. Um, and it's a group of young winemakers that they have a restaurant, they have this winemaking facility. It's very kind of young energy and cooperative. And, uh, you know, they, you can just tell they've tasted a lot of the great Pinot Noirs of the world. Um, you know, it's mostly whole cluster. So it has this other kind of layer of texture and spice to it. Um, but, you know, a wine that really kind of just grabbed us kind of by the scruff and just said, pay attention to me. We were tasting with the importer uh, directly and, you know, this guy really only focuses on small, small growers in New Zealand um, in Australia. And it was just so refreshing um, because we just don't see those great estate bottled wines from those areas. And that's why we wanted to bring this to your table, to your glass. Um, another kind of great small uh, wine that's very new to the shop. We just tasted this wine on Monday. And I gotta be honest with you, sometimes like these wines like really just like jump into this six pack, like at the last moment. And it's like, you better take me with you. Um, which I love that aspect of like, how do we pick these wines? Like what, what's like, what's our reasoning? And it's not that maybe it's the last thing we tasted and it's fresh on our memory, but like, this is just really, really great Grenache from, uh, you know, from just west of Madrid. So this is Las Moradas de San Martin um, and it's all on granitic soils. He's very kind of sparse. Just think of the classic like windmills of, you know, uh, of central Spain, like the great continental plateau of Iberia. It's hot, it's dusty, it's rocky. Um, anything that grows needs like 20 feet between it and the next thing just to like have enough water to get by. Um, and you can kind of feel the, the depth and the concentration of this uh, Garnacha. But the other thing that's really, really important here is the freshness. So this is a 2017, and when I was tasting it with uh, the distributor, we just I just said, this is an achievement for how fresh it is. It's all red fruit. It's beautiful, all red fruit. And Garnacha or Grenache, you know, it better be elegant because it's not this big, you know, kind of wine that pushes you around. Um, yeah, it can definitely hold its alcohol and kind of bring concentration, but it really should be soft texturally, and this is absolutely that but it's so pretty. Um, yeah, this is uh, again, like all organic. Uh, spends 10 months in these 500 liter punching, uh, you know, uh, French, old French barrels. No finding, no filtration. Pretty uh, classic recipe for organic wine making. So. Finishing up in the Southern Rhone again. We are not that far away from where we were right here, but like, you know, the Southern Rhone is just such a playground for like amazing producers that, uh, you know, whether red or white, that we consistently drink. We love the styles. Um, and here we are in this village called Gigondas. So um, it's a winemaker named Yves Charon um, who farms this, uh, this you know, domain called Domaine de Grand uh, Montmirel. And I love the name of this, this kind of like the sub name of this, which is Le De Juliette Selection de Vilvin. So the, the, the two Juliettes, like it's basically the daughter of the winemaker and the daughter of the importer, Charles Neal, who I don't know, Charles Neal kind of has a Midas touch, like in my opinion, like I, I love 
just about whatever he brings in, whether it's Calvados and Armagnac to Champagne and Burgundy and man, he's got a really great palette. Um, and this one is new in the shop. Um, it's all destemmed, you know, blend of Grenache Syrah and Morved. It's all concrete, you know, no oak. And so the purity and the freshness and the depth is there. Um, it's really, really special. 65 year old vines, it's delicious. So um, this is your March 2023 seller series description. I'm loving these wines. I know we've got some uh, kind of some fun, uh, you know, kind of weather hopefully kind of hitting us soon, at least more sunshine, but these should be filling your glass uh, along the way. So 20% off the wines, they should be available uh, tomorrow afternoon. Come get them.